Welcome to chapter three of the textbook on sustainability management. In this chapter, we will look at another type of stakeholder, and especially we're looking at governmental actors. The idea is that after reading this chapter, you will be able to, for example, explain the idea of market failures and government failures. Market failures, that is, um, the markets don't work in the way they are expected by economic theory. And if markets fail, we have less welfare and governments are often assumed to regulate such failed markets or regulate markets failures to ensure a desired outcome of economic activities of companies, of consumers and so on. However, there are also government failures which impede this endeavor and that can also be a problem. We will then uh, distinguish indirect from direct political actors and you will be able to do so and as the name already suggests, direct actors have a direct influence on legislation and regulations, while the indirect direct actors cannot directly put forward legislation and regulation, but they still have some form of means to enforce their interests. We will also be able to explain negative externalities and why they are relevant specifically for sustainable development. Negative externalities means that there are um, costs from production and consumption that, however, are not included in market prices. Negative externalities means that we have like these negative costs, for example, environmental degradation and so on, um, that needs to be taken care of. Furthermore, you'll be able to explain different elements of regulation in the area of sustainable development. First, we'll start with so-called command and control instruments. You will be able to explain how these work, discuss their advantages and disadvantages and provide examples. And you will learn that command and control instruments prescribe certain outcomes through mandates or prescriptions. So they are uh, working pretty directly. Furthermore, you will explain um, different types of information requirements and governmental support as another type of regulations and again discuss their advantages, disadvantages, provide examples. Such information requirements and governmental support aim at changing behavior towards sustainability through incentives, through information, uh, thus they are less direct than these command and control instruments. And finally, with regards to the instruments, you will be able to explain how different types of market-based instruments works and again discuss their advantages and disadvantages and provide examples. You will learn in that regard that market-based instruments in came, aim at um, encouraging more sustainable behavior through uh, direct market signals, so including these signals in the regular market mechanisms, in this case usually in the form of price signals. We distinguish into taxes and fees on the one hand, usually, and so-called tradable permits on the other hand. And finally, you will then discuss how different external factors and regulatory regimes influence the effectiveness of these different types of sustainability policy instruments. And you will learn that it depends on the nature of the problem or the challenge, as well as on institutional factors which combination of these instruments that I just briefly explained is most appropriate in like any given situation. And you will also learn there that there is no one size fits all approach. You will also learn that regulated policies and capacities exhibit vast differences among the different uh, countries, national regimes, and that again influences their effectiveness. With regards to the different features in this uh, chapter, we will talk about corporate advocates for and against combating climate change in the United States in the feature on sustainability in society. So we will talk about how uh, companies influence regulators, influence governmental actors for and against actually climate and climate change. So there are also a couple of companies that actively advocate for increased regulations, which is quite interesting. We will also talk about in uh, another um, feature on sustainability in society about the European emissions trading scheme system. That is a market-based system of um, uh, covering external ex uh, externalities in, 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 a, in a market price, uh, in a price for emission trading um, and for emissions, in this case, uh, CO2 and CO2 equivalents. 
And finally, we will give you a uh, in brief insight into a person again, Faces of Sustainability, um, Kate Rayworth. She's an economist famous for her work on the so-called donut economy, which you see here depicted in the short figure there, where she um, talks about how nations and actors can actually work with regards to the ecological ceilings that we have, the boundaries, as well as the social foundations. So the most important elements of sustainable development in this model of the donut economy.